Hey guys, it's Baron. Welcome back to the channel. I had a, I saw something online the other day that I wanted to share with you. And <clears throat> I say the other day, I've, it's been a while back. Southerners have a bad way of saying the other day, which can mean anything from the start of time until this morning. Um, <clears throat> I do want to ask you a question. What, how can this unrelated pile of stuff save your life? Glad you asked. Give me just a minute to get it set up, and I'll show you. All right, guys. This is a play on a ceramic heater, and it works, okay? This could literally save your life. What I've got here is a just a pile of washers, nuts and bolts, and three clay pots. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this wide one and run it through this hole in the bottom of the pot. Now, on the inside of the pot, we drop this other large washer. And then we start stacking these smaller washers. What you want to do is create dead air space between your different um, between your different pots. By doing that <clears throat> your heat source is going to be under this one and it's going to heat it up the hottest. The radiant heat coming off of this will heat this one and the radiant heat off of this one will warm up the big one. And it, it will generate some impressive temperatures, I'm told. All right, that was a lock washer that I just put in there on top. I didn't show it to you. Just a standard lock washer. This is nothing out of the ordinary. I picked this up at, at Lowe's uh, the other day. It was not an arm and a leg. So give me just a minute to get this tightened down and we'll start with the next layer. All right guys, you can see how I've got that in here now. You can see the, the bolt. That is a standard half inch by four carriage bolt. You can see the top is rounded on it. But like I said, these are just standard everyday pieces you can pick up. Now, I put, I'm putting seven washers between each layer and then I'm dropping on the lock washer and the, and the nut on top of the bolt. All right, there's seven more and I think I'm going to save this lock washer for the last. And then we're going to take this nut, whoop, wait a minute, about, about to pull the black in and do something. Put this in. I have to tease him. He's my cameraman. And run this nut in on top of it. I'll be right back. All right, guys. There's my bolt. There's my nut. And remember, this is only finger tight. Okay, this is not rocket science. This is possibly survival science. <clears throat> so, I'm going to drop a washer in on top of that little bolt, that little nut. And then we're going to take the last. Now, I'm old enough to remember when these came with a hole in the bottom of it. And we took my bit and brace. And for those of you who are not familiar with that term, this is an old fashioned bit and brace. If you'll remember when I was talking to Scab a couple of weeks ago, 
from Choir Boys Outdoors, I talked about old technology and people forgetting how to use the technology that's already there. This is some of what I was talking about. Now, anybody can take a, a modern drill and put a, put a uh, drill bit in it and drill a hole. But ceramic is a fragile material and what you want is a bit, a, a bit for wood, a cutting wood, drilling holes in wood. And this is a half inch bit. If you'll notice, it's got wings on it here and here. And what those wings do is they will cut into the ceramic, into this clay, and they will keep it from cracking as this bites through. This will pull itself down and into it, and the wings will cut a hole that then these, this blade part right here can come in and clean up. There's virtually, I mean, the, all the pressure that's on it is what you put on it. And then all you do is turn. That's as, that's as hard as it gets. But anyway, that's what I had in mind when I was talking with Scab the other day. Now, we're going to take this smallest pot and put it here in the center. And we're going to take the remainder of, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to back it out. I'm not going to need as many washers in the bottom of this as I'm going to have need in the other, other part. So I'm going to stack those up, replace the small pot, and then drop in these washers, the lock washer, and the nut. When I went by my local hardware big box to gather up all this stuff, they did about all they had was this bronze. If you notice, it's colored gold. That's bronze. And I didn't really need bronze. You don't need bronze for this. This can be done with just stainless steel. And stainless steel will be a bit cheaper. But they didn't have it. The truck, as they say, the truck had not run that day yet. But anyway. All right. There we go. Now, let me show you how it works. All right, guys, it's cooking. And as you can see, the candles are positioned underneath and we've lit them and it's been burning for several minutes now. Now, I'm not going to do this and tell you, hey, this works so great, but I'm going to let Blackie come in as a neutral uh, arbiter. Okay. And he's going to he's going to to evaluate it. Okay, I can definitely feel heat radiating up through the bolt. This has only been going for. 25 minutes. It's like a warm coffee cup right now. Just on the outside. And this is up here. The rim is warm enough you don't want to hold it. This right now is like a, a hot cup of coffee. And so is that bolt. So it is heating up. Now this is in less than 30 minutes. This is one of them things that you get it going, it's a slow yield. It's slow to warm up, but once it gets there, it keeps going. It doesn't lose heat fast either, that's the whole point. So, yeah. Now the brick, stone cold. It's not doing it because heat's rising. There's plenty of air, and I can put my hand right there and feel the heat coming out. Since the brick is sealing it up, that heat has to swirl around in there and it's trapped and the only out is right here. There's a little whisper something heat back there. 
but the bulk of the heat's going to come out right here to rise out. So it's intensifying and trapping all them BTUs right there. Now you give this a couple hours to heat up, and that's probably going to be so hot you can't touch it, and it will radiate and warm an entire room by convection. So yeah, I think it'd be a worthwhile thing, especially in a small place, like you've got the powers going out, you're in cold country, and y'all get in the hall bathroom in the middle of the room of the house, close up the door, put you know a little bit of plug in the, uh, as much as you can, and then let this heat up a room. Yeah, it could keep you alive. I mean, look at a snow cave. They only put one candle in a snow cave, and that keeps you alive. It'll keep it above freezing. So I'm impressed how fast this warmed up. Be honest with you, I figured it'd be where you could grab this for an hour and couldn't tell nothing, but in just a few minutes. I bet that inner pot's real cooky right now. Because this is three layers of pots to this. Like I said, it's like a hot cup of coffee. Another thing <clears throat> that we need to consider is your heat source. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the heat source that we're using. This is just a very small tea candle. There are three underneath it. And that's what it's done in less than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you increase your heat source size, mm -hmm. like go to the three wick Crisco can and put it over, put that over, put this pot system over it, you'll heat it up in a matter of minutes because you've got a larger heat source. And then that heat source will go for like 72 hours. Yes, nonstop. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I like it. All right, guys, it's, it's Blackie approved. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this short. It's uh, something that I've been wanting to do, wanting to share with you, because it's so simple. I mean, it really is amazingly simple. And honestly, it can save your life. You can get, you can set it up on cinder blocks with the Crisco candle or even uh, the scented candles that you get from the big box. Drop you one under there, drop you two under there and concentrate that bigger heat source to get a bigger result. But with three little, t but three little tea candles that has become noticeably warmer in 30 minutes. And we're out here in the open, okay? It 80 something degree heat. Yeah, it, it's 80 something degrees here on October the 22nd. And you can feel the heat radiating off of it with those three little tea candles. So I encourage you, throw this together, see what you can come up with and experiment. Because if you're out camping and you need a, a small heat source, inexpensive heat source, there's your answer. If you want to keep one around for those cold days that you only want to warm up one room or a room that's off to the side by itself, there's your answer. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And we will catch you down. Oh, forgot. If you did enjoy the video, like it, please. Leave me a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear... Uh, design improvements. I may try to lengthen the distance between my pots, get my, my inner pot closer down to the heat source so that it gets hotter faster. But tell me what you think, okay? If you've enjoyed it, like I say, like, share, and subscribe to Bears Old Ways. See y'all down the road.